I'm Sarah. Um, I love lasers a lot, besides FPGAs. Um, in the Fab Lab of Karlsruhe, which the Fab Lab is oriented at the ideas of the Fab Lab idea of the MIT, uh, we got funding for a laser sour. The laser sour is an open source project. Um, if you can see it on the screen, it's a huge machine. It's this size. Um, and uh, I want to talk about it. I want to talk about what we've done, um, what went wrong, what was bad in the original design, what we have tried to make better, where we fell in, um, what mistakes we made. And so I want to encourage other spaces to also build laser saw because it's quite a bang for the buck. I mean, Five to six Ks, you get a 100 watt machine. It's not that much. My background is laser marking development, uh, laser system development. Uh, what you can see, this is a professional or industrial laser system, which is in a production line. Uh, some parts pass by, they get a barcode marked on and continues. Uh, this is what I've developed for the last two and a half years. It's a Yak laser. It operates at the wavelength of uh, 1064 nanometers, which is near infrared, what, which is perfect and amazing for metals. You can engrave, you can... <coughs> sorry. Uh, you can do a lot of things with, uh, also with plastics. Um, this machine got me started into the laser world and gave me the passion for, for laser marking. And I love it when... I've seen it a lot of time. It's, a, it's like the washing machine and kids effect. You put a kid in, in front of the washing machine when it runs and the kid stares like this. So this is the same with the laser beam. I can't w stop watching. I love it. So, the machine, what, what I'm going to talk about, um, the structure. I want to talk about the, the laser saw itself. Then I want to get into it in, in, in the detail, how the beam runs, um, the pros and cons of the original design. This is very important. It is not what we've done, but this is what sort of out of the box. Then what we've done, in mechanically or in electrically um, ways. And then there's a very painful issue that's calibration. And one last, which hasn't made it into the talk yet, is what you shouldn't do. Um, by the way, this is uh, the tube. This is the actual laser tube from our laser sour. We had a small mishap, so it, uh, I could bring it here. It's toast. Well, um, the laser saw runs with this CO2 laser tube, has 100 watt optical laser power, which is quite a lot. I mean, if you go through 12 to 50 millimeters wood, um, like with a hot knife in, into butter, this is quite impressive. Um, also acrylic and other plastics. Um, the CO2 wave, uh, the CO2 lasers with the wavelength of 1064 nanometers, they're very, very good at organic materials like wood or paper, leather, skin. I made some experiment, experiments with a pig skin. It goes right through. It smells like you don't want to smell. Um, acrylic, plastics. But what's totally, totally, this is a strong warning to everyone who plays with lasers, don't use PVC or any other chlorine-containing materials. This will decompose, this will reorganize the molecules of the, of the chlorine and you will have a fume of um, yeah. HCl, uh, hydrochloric acid, and this will make your, your machine from the inside rusty immediately. Don't do. Uh, you see the website, lasersour.com. Um, the plans are online, um, you can download them. Uh, there's a forum where you can have access to what other people did. Um, I haven't been into this community too, too much, but uh, it seems to be quite interesting. Yeah, the, the, the um, 
the working area is quite large. I mean, you have 1 meter 20 times 60 centimeters. This is huge. You, you can put a large piece of wood or plastic in and do whatever you want. This is amazing. Um, and also the speed, we've tested it with uh, 10,000 millimeters minutes uh, cutting speed. This goes like what? And the wood is cut into pieces. Quite impressive. Um, about the CO2 itself, um, I mean, this tube with 100 watt uh, optical power is weights about a grand with the power supply. Uh, the, the lasers I use for my work, uh, it's a 20 watt uh, yuck system. They are in the range of six, six kilo euros. Uh, so this is a totally different story. And uh, you, you can have a lot of energy for quite a little money. Um, for example, the, the laser cutter the, the, the laser cutting systems for, for uh, metal working, for these sheets of metal, they use the CO2. Normally, um, CO2 doesn't work very well with metals, but you can throw a lot of energy into it, and then you can cut metal. So you need one, two, three kilowatt of, of light, but hey, it's cheap. You can afford it. Uh, it has a quite a high efficiency um, compared to other gas lasers. Um, you don't need uh, 10 kilowatts to get 500 milliwatts optical power out of it. So, conclusion, happiness from a tube. Um, so, we go to the path of flight. Um, on top, you see this tube. Then to the right, I hope... It's, yeah, it should be the right direction. Right. Um, you see the first mirror, which stands still. This is the first mirror in the mounting where the laser itself is. So it goes like this, and this stands still. Um, then the M2 is the second mirror. Um, this is on the y-axis, which moves. And the mirror M3 is on the x-axis. And this... Um, deflects the beam downside to the, through, the, through the lens. Um, painful to calibrate, I will come to it later, um, but that you have a rough idea how, how the setup is. It is basically this classic plotter principle. You have the XY um, thingy going around. Um, this is done by stepper motors. No, you don't need any big machines, any big stepper motors. You can have these small NEMA, I don't know, 17, whatsoever, <coughs> um, to, to operate the system. So, pros. Not so, not so beefy on the price. You can do it in your space, which is an awesome idea. You need to have three, four, five, six people who know what they do. You need to have some, some electrically experience. You need to have some mechanically experience. <laughs> Off you go. Um, buy the parts, build it yourself. Um, we had a lot of fun. We had the mechanical group. We had the electrical group. I was in the electrical group because of my experience with, um, with laser safety. Um, yeah, and the user interface is quite easy. This is um, in the stock. There's a board that there's plugged in a BeagleBone black. There runs a web server which you access via browser and you put in SVG files. Um, what's nice is you can have many colors of SVG, SVG files and to every color you assign a specific energy like speed, marking speed and, and a percentage of energy. So you can engrave and in the first run, then you in the second run you cut out the, the drill holes and in the last run you cut out the outlines. Um, it, it works, it has its flaws. We try to mod, I don't know if we have it on GitHub yet. Um, we try to implement uh, the, the, to see how long does the job last? How long is, is the tube on? So we, we can uh, see how much every user has to pay. We are right now thinking about one euro per minute because filter systems are quite expensive and um, 
the tube itself doesn't last uh, till kingdom comes. Um, yeah, if you can download the software, I don't have any screenshots, um, but you can tinker with it runs on, uh, it's, it's a Python thingy running. I'm not into software, I'm a hardware person. So, coming to the contrary sides. Um, first of all, it has no z-axis, no electrical z-axis or z-axis. Um, you have this honeycomb aluminum flat bed uh, where you put your, your, your material on and then you have a tube which is too far. Uh, oh, thanks. Um, on, the, on the left hand side, right hand side picture, you, you see the third mirror, you see the head where, where it is a, basically the tube with a holder and you can adjust the tube. And this way you can adjust the focus, which means you can have sort of a z-axis. But this is only about 50 millimeters. I have seen other machines um, where you can adjust the height of the table electrically. Some have done, uh, you can tilt it, which is very nice. But the, the design of the laser saw doesn't have it. Something to, to go into and do a redesign. Um, then they used in their in the original design patch cables, Ethernet patch cables you get from your your supplier. It has nothing to do with Ethernet, with the protocol or with the speed. The thing is, you have a very cheap cable you can get in quite some distances, and you have readily made a connector onto. Again, nothing about network. It is just DC running through and very low frequency, very static signals. Um, the only point was the, the connectors on the, on the uh, suggestion of the board are RJ45. So everything is made cheap. Um, the the contra, con of this solution is the, the, the cables are very stiff. And if you, you, if you use it in a drag chain, you go backward and forward and backward and forward. Try it with a network cable. Do it 100 times, bend it, and you will have a cable break. Uh, some mechanical details were not so nice. Um, one we realized is that it's, it can flex. It has no diagonal um, stiffings. Um, things to stiffen the, 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 the whole frame. So if you lift up one side, it goes like this, and it is not, not uh, adjusted anymore. So we had some problems in the lab because it's an old uh, slaughterhouse, and we got the, the cooling room, and the, the, the floor is not flat. It goes to the middle of the room where there's a drain. So we pushed forward the laser, did our adjustments for, for a couple of days, and yes, it works. And we pushed it back, and nothing worked. Um, so if some of you are mechanically in uh, experience and uh, know what, what you have to do, then yeah, don't use this original design. Um, in the suggestion, they left open how to how to handle the, the, the air. When you cut with a laser, when you do anything material um, processing with a laser, you will have fumes. You will have small particles. They are just there, and you need to get rid of them. The easiest way is you have one hole on the other side, and you have a, a, a fan on the other side, and it just sucks the air through. Um, we did it. Uh, basically this way, and um, we got a lot of vortexes going around, and, and it is like uh, in a snowstorm where you have um, in one end of a, of a house, suddenly, in German it's called Schneewehr, um, a lot of snow, and the other side is, is, is there's no snow, and, and just by the wind. So you have a lot of dust in the machine, which, um, which is in one, one corner, and the other 
area, it's, it's nothing, and the, the, the mirrors are, are dirty, and so uh, there's a lot of room for errors. Uh, we haven't figured it out yet perfectly. It became better. We have another fan with, uh, I don't know how many cubic meters per, per hour, I think one and a half thousand cubic meters per hour uh, of airflow. This makes it a bit easier and makes it a bit better, and we have a filter system. Uh, but realized um, when the filter becomes clogged, the airflow isn't that much anymore, and we start again having these vortexes. So there's a lot of, of room to think about. Um, yeah, the original design doesn't care about the EN6850, which is the standard, the European standard for laser systems. Um, it starts with the emergency stop switch. It, start, it continues with <coughs> um, a, an interlock circuitry, and uh, it is not safe. You can't use it out of the box. It's, you can use it alone, at home, in your basement, or in the garage if no one else comes. Then you can do whatever you want but not as soon as there are more people involved who might also not know about lasers. So that's, that's a bit weak. I mean, they come from, from America. Uh, this design is American. I don't know, these standards are quite, are quite strict. They're similar to the 6850 norm uh, standard. They should have followed it. So this is one of the um, mechanical things. Um, the, when you see this is uh, the, the holder for the, the big boom, which goes in, 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 in y-axis, and there is this other piece which goes in x-axis. Um, and uh, there are three long screws into the extruded aluminum profile. And they're quite long, and after some time of operation, uh, we rea realized it got a bit loose. Um, and these, these screws, they warped a bit. So suddenly we could turn this, this boom, and um, of immediately you have fun with the adjustment of the beam. So room for improvement. Um, then it comes to electrical. Yes. We had the problem that um, when, you f when you switch on the laser source and you fire, um, the, the beagle bone, the integrated beagle bone black crashes. And we didn't know why. And it was some, on some days it was okay, and some days, some days it was really bad, so you, you make a single shot and everything is crashed. Um, it took us a while. I, I grabbed my oscilloscope uh, from work and connected it to the pulse width modulated output from the BeagleBone via an AVR, which does the G code interpretation into the, the stepping, step dir commands and into the PWM pulse width modulation to the laser source. And uh, what you see on the, on the bottom line, the, the pink one, is the signal that I saw on, on the PCB going out to the laser source. At first, you see it is a 5 volt logic. It looks nice, and then we have a lot of bursts going up and down, up and down, minus, minus 5, minus 7 volts, and plus 10, plus 12 volts. Um, I forgot the other traces. Um, and we realized that the power supply is sort of firing back. There, there are a lot of EMI problems. So the power supply fired back, and this is what, what the, the, the pink line is what comes out of the AVR. And so it goes back on the AVR and so makes the AVR crash. Um, yeah. I don't want to talk about e waste out of the box. Now, I'm not going to talk about e-waste out, out of the box, but uh, it comes close to it. Um, by the way, this electronics, this stock electronics um, is done, is it? It is open source. Yeah, that's fantastic. Let's do open source and have no clue about what we do. Um, it's done in fritzing. 
if anyone who knows about fritzing, you can have, it is very good if you have a breadboard, if you have three resistors and two LEDs and connected maybe to, to some, some embedded board, go with it. That's fine. As long as you have more and you do a larger schematic and are crazy enough to make a PCB out of it. No way, don't do it. You can't click like in other EDA programs like Eagle or, or uh, or CAD or whatever, you, you click on a trace and it, it's highlighted and it says which name it has. Um, on Fritzing, you click on it and you just see uh, it is just highlighted between two junctions and um, there is no consistency between the, the schematic and the PCB itself. And I had to connect this board. We, we had difficulties with the time. We had a deadline. <laughs> the laser saw was a university project or um, Institute for Technikfolgenabschätzung. It was a scientific project and we had a strict deadline. So we couldn't develop a known board. We had to use this and we had to live with it and I had to connect it and I got so cranky so many times. I was close to throw it through a closed window and, and smash everything into pieces. Painful. Um, so enough of a rant. Yes. So what you see on the left-hand side is, um, so I did try to, to see, bring it into Eagle to make the pictures. Um, what you see is basically how it looks like you have the AVR, you have two wires, two traces to the RJ45 connector, nothing else, no protection, no nothing. Um, for, for the inputs, for, for the end switches, so X and Y have end switches, and for the, for, the, um, for the big door, you have also switches. Um, for the end switches, um, at least you have a pull-down resistor. Um, so this is something I wouldn't consider publish to publish. Um, because the, the solder stop was black, you couldn't see any traces. And with a, with a loop and a lot of guessing, I put in a, an inductor against EMI distortions, I had the capacitor and the Zener diode to at least cut these tremendous, enormous over and under shoots, and it works much better. Still, this is a workaround, and it was a lot of work to, to get the SMD components onto this board, and a lot of scratching, of cutting of copper traces, and so no fun, really no fun. So, but we did something. Hey, why is this sleepy? What? Okay. Um, what we did in modifications is um, this also is a beam catcher. Um, this is for, for the beam going from the first to the second mirror. Um, in case the first mirror is not adjusted, you don't know where it's going to, to shoot the beam. Uh, we have this cer ceramic tile so that if we don't meet, if we don't hit the, 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 the second mirror spot on, it, it, the, the beam doesn't go somewhere else. Uh, so if the hood is closed, nothing will happen. It, it, is, it is acrylic and acrylic is, for the unfocused beam, is quite safe. You see what happens, you smell it, um, it, it works but we use the ceramic tiles on, on many places, um, just nothing happens if you shoot. We also use the ceramic tiles on the floor. We first had captain. Captain is a fantastic material. Um, if you have a PCB and you go through the, the solder wave and you want to, um, you have some, some holes you don't want to be so filled with solder, so you have this captain type and you stick it onto and nothing happens. Very thermal resistive, resistant, uh, but not good for a laser. And someone had the idea, it wasn't me, oh yeah, let's 
let's stick everywhere, let's stick Captain on it. And it, when you shoot with a laser, it makes funny, funny things, funny fumes and toxic thingies. So we use the ceramics. And what you can see on, on the floor is um, where the laser was going on, on cutting through wood. It is, you have compressed air through this tube. There's a lens and there is um, the nozzle and you put in some, some compressed air so that no fume goes onto the, onto the lens um, to, to um, make it dark. Um, and to blow away all the fumes and to cool the, the, the spot where the laser beam goes into the material that nothing ignites. Heat plus, plus wood plus oxygen fire. Um, so it goes through, this, through the wood and, and leaves some traces on, on the tiles. Um, quite impressive. So what else did we do? Um, it's a bit tricky to see, but we did a beam labyrinth. Um, when you close the hood, according to the original design, and you open it a little bit, there's a possibility that the beam goes through and goes into the room where you stand. So it's just an aluminum angle we, we screwed on, on one of the extruded aluminums. Um, just sort of make it safer. Then we changed the, the tube holder. The, the, it's so funny. The original design was um, you had an aluminum piece of metal and another one, and it goes like clock. And there's a, this delicate glass tube inside. So now we did something else. And the benefit is we can adjust it in height, which is very important for the process of, of calibrate, calibrating the laser. Then we tried to improve our airflow system. This is, was a test on the left-hand side. Um, we tried to split the, the intake and air into what goes above the, 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 the cutting area and below to, to get away the fumes. It, we are still not finished yet. Um, on the other picture, <laughs> you see um, the dust from cutting wood. This is what I told about the vortexes and um, leaving dust traces everywhere. So then we did, when you operate a laser um, and do some material, um, you cut through something, um, you will have, or engrave it, you will have a lot of dust, and this dust can be very toxic, and this dust can be smelly, uh, can stink, and uh, you don't want to let it go, let it have, you don't want to have it in your lab or in your space, and you don't want to let it out unfiltered. So we designed a filter system, uh, which has five stages, um, going from going f finer and finer until the, the, the two black things are oh, mm, this way, um, are carbon, active carbon filters, which take out, uh, which filter the last smelly bits and pieces. This works quite well. You have to maintain it, you have to look for the filters. Um, when one filter gets clogged, you see it that you again have these vortexes so the, the, it reduces the pressure and the airflow. And we change the out, uh, the this area for, for suction, that we cut out um, on one side, the air stream, stream goes in, and on the other side, in the floor, it go, goes down and sucked out to the bottom. Uh, what else? Yeah. Um, I mentioned fume traces on the mirrors are very bad because you lose energy. Uh, the mirrors will heat up. It's not good. Um, we try to 3D print um, covers for, for the mirrors. Um, this is one of our latest iteration with this long glass tube. Um, if someone has a better idea, so please, I'm open to any suggestions. It makes it a bit better. Um, we have less traces on, on the mirrors. 
Um, on, on the left hand side you see the original design, uh, it is just the mirror holder and the tube and you have a lot of air and, and space around for any dust and any fumes and any smoke. Um, it gets a bit better, we are still not at the end from where we want to go. Um, so, electrically, we made some electrical changes. We haven't changed the board, the, the electronics board, yet. Uh, we, it is still in discussion. We have a lot of ideas floating around, uh, a lot of different theories how, how this laser has to be made. Um, but uh, we, we did some changes compared to the original design. <coughs> First of all, we use an e-stop relay, which, which uh, prevents an automatic, which, that we don't have an automatic restart. Um, so you do something, you hit the e-stop switch, uh, the beam will go out immediately and the motors from the X and Y axis stop working immediately. It is not emergency off. It's an, it is an emergency stop, uh, so the, the, the PCB, the, the electronics still is alive. You get data back, you can do something, uh, but it is, uh, the idea behind is that the dangerous thing is shut down, not the machine itself, just the dangerous parts are shut down. Um, our relay is from Dolts. We got it from eBay for affordable money, and it's, it's something to do. Um, we put, we made an interlock circuitry. Um, interlock circuitry means that if not all the conditions are fulfilled, you can't have a laser beam. Um, so if you interrupt this interlock circuitry, like you open the the hood. Um, or the, the, the door, um, then the beam will go off immediately. So it is, you can do it, laser job, and while the job is running, you open the, the hood, and the beam is stopped immediately, and the, the, the X and Y continue working, doing their thing, you can put away something, what you've forgotten, you can close it, the beam will continue. Um, so, also when you switch off the, the chiller, I will come to cooling later. That's the reason why the tube is here. Um, and also the, the air system. The, the compressed air which goes into the tube is within the interlock circuitry and as well as the suction system. So you simply don't want to have that fumes in the, in the system. We did it once. I don't know how it came. We, did, we had it once. Someone came up with a big piece of acrylic or whatever polycarbonate material. Ah, oh, let's can can we just do a quick cut? I don't want to to use a table saw, a circular saw, whatever. Yeah, sure. Um, put it in. Uh, it was still in construction. Close the door, and we haven't had the uh, the extraction in the interlock circuitry. We forgot to switch on the fan. And immediately the, the chamber was filled with this yellowish um, fumes. And it took us half an hour in winter time to get all the smoke out of the lab. You don't want to have this. And we changed from these patch cables, which are easy to break, uh, to something nicer. So we, used, we actually used Reflex from lab carbon, which is a very nice cable, which is very suitable for drag chains. You can go run back and forth a million times. It doesn't break. Very, very thin, very fine, flexible, thin wires. Excellent cable. No, I'm not related to lab carbon. Um, this is our electrical, this is operating pan. <laughs> on the, on the right-hand side, you see the main switch for power mains, the chiller switch, air, and for the laser source. And you see the e-stop switch, and the green, -ish, the green button is the release, the, the, the uh, e-stop relay. So 
process is you switch on the machine, then you open the, the padlock, which we use according to EN6850. You need to have, a, for a class 4 laser system, you need to have a switch, a key switch, or a numpad, or something like that only um, people who are allowed to use the laser actually can use the laser. So remove the laser, um, the, the, the keypad, uh, no, padlock, release uh, the e-stop the e switch and push on the green button and you're good to go. And when you actually want to do something, you switch on chiller, which is quite, quite, the chiller is quiet. Um, you switch it on right after you switch on the machine and then air is quite noisy. You just switch on air when you want, actually want to laser something. <laughs> Um, so, there is sort of an e-stop functionality on the, webs, on, the, on the web front and on the website, but it is not, has nothing to do with, a, with an e-stop, with a serious e-stop. So, in panic, when something goes wrong, you don't want to click somewhere and find a button. Where was the button? Where was e-stop? Ah, up top right corner. Okay, let's click. Oh, shit, missed. Um, you want to have a serious one, and it stops the, the danger immediately. Mm, so then we ran into these troubles with the EMI problems from the laser source. And we had the idea that, that our beagle bone was defective that something destroyed something on the board. It is just uh, three volts uh, tolerant, the IOs, and if there comes something more, it is very itchy on this, uh, this issue, uh, then it dies. Mm. So, on the, on the larger piece, you see the AVR and the, the rest of the electronics. Um, which does the G-code interpretation. And this is connected via our receive and transmit. It's a standard serial connection on TTR level. And then it goes to the BeagleBone, and then it goes via Ethernet to the outside world. And we, we took out the BeagleBone, and we had, have another embedded arm board, and we simply replaced it. Uh, this works. So, calibration. Um, calibration is pain in the neck. Seriously, straightforward. Takes days. Makes a lot of gray hairs. Um, it's necessary. You need to calibrate the system. You need to calibrate the system where the laser is going to stand, finally. As I said before, we have the, the floor in the lab is not horizontally, not leveled, but it goes go slightly downwards. Um, you need to have it in that place if you don't have a perfectly leveled floor. You need to level everything. Go with this water level, check out diagonal, horizontal, vertical axis, all these needs to be leveled. Um, and then you need to have the, the, the beam go coming from the tube. This is the, the fun part, the fun end. It goes to the first mirror. It has to hit the first mirror from the height in the middle. And then you go to the second mirror and it has to, to hit it on all positions in the same height. And then you go to the third. Um, so it, it is a lot of opening, closing screws, um, going back again, again, again through the cycle until you have it all. The beam goes and run on pain. Um, uh, pain, not pain. Um, and um, we did something to, to help. To, to calibrate calibrate this laser. <laughs> this is basically um, how the mirror holder looks like. 
it is a piece of aluminum. And uh, so the beam, beam comes from here, and you have this piece of aluminum, and this, this way, and you have the, the, the actual mirror goes a bit inside. It is a bit um, like a mirror frame. Um, and we used to, we stick a, a label, um, I come from the labeling industry, um, we, we stick a, a, a label, a thermal sensitive label onto this frame and the actual mirror is not the same uh, height, it, it is three millimeters deeper. Um, so you need to do some calculations, and you see on the left-hand side, um, this is actually in vertical, and you see that uh, the beam doesn't hit it in the middle, but it, hit it has to hit it a bit below. Um, what you did is, um, yeah, this, these are shots from onto this thermal sensitive paper, and here you see on the on the left-hand side. What it just meant, uh, the, the beam holder and the mirror, and it is be behind uh, the, the front of the, of the mirror holder. And um, so the two images, uh, the two shots on the thermal sensitive papers are quite okay. Uh, so we stick this, uh, this paper onto the mirror holder, and with a fingernail or with the back of a knife, uh, we just mark it. So this is this. Sota circle, this funny polynom, polygon. Um, so that we then um, have a tool. It is on uh, printed on foil, um, and uh, on the right hand side you see this. It looks like a fingerprint, but if you center it on the on the spot where the where the beam hit the paper. You, you can see how far off you are from uh, how far you have to adjust the mirror. So this is you make a shot, you, you put it down, you ah, two millimeters too far. Okay, then you you open a screw, lift the, the, the mirror holder for two millimeters, you do again the same shot. Takes days. Um, I want to to, to put these files on my website and also as a file on, on the talk. Um, yeah, it's difficult to des describe. Um, if someone wants to know how it works, uh, Fab Lab is in Karlsruhe. We are very open to, to visitors. Please come to visit um, and we can show you. So, things you should not do. Uh, you should not fry your tube. It's expensive. This one is fried. Um, very simple reason, totally stupid reason. Um, the, the chiller is a system, uh, it has a water pump, it has two water pumps, so it's redundant. Um, it has a cooling system with, with a compressor and everything. It is a fantastic machine. But if the plug This here slips out, then you're then you're done, then you're finished. It happened, and five minutes after first time laser on this day, it made just piff, light was off, and water ran over through the whole machine. And uh, I don't know how much water is inside, but the pump was fortunately not functioning, so it didn't continue pumping water through the electronics of the laser system. Um, yeah, expensive, expensive experience. Um, this is something you should avoid. Always check your cooling system and always check the water security beside all other things. Um, great. Um, if you like, you can contact me. Uh, Sarah at laserlady.org. Uh, soon will you, see, you will see this talk on this website. Um, soon you will see the talk from the GPN 15 on this website. You can contact me if you have any questions. Um, feel free. Um, I want to thank all the guys here at the camp. 
for this awesome time. I want to thank the Fab Lab Karlsruhe. Um, and I also want to thank the ITAS in Institute for Technikfolgenabschätzung in Karlsruhe, which did the funding and which helped us a lot. And we had a lot of fun together, as you can see on the picture below. Um, we have some time left. I'm out of slides now. Um, if you want to know something, feel free now. Um, we can do for the Q&A. Uh, we have a lot of time because this is the last talk in this tent for the camp 2015. And at first, thank you for your patience and thanks for listening. <laughs> and which doc is doing the Q&A? Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, we have some people here. I'll start over on my right. Um, at Hackerspace Hack42, we have a Laos laser. Yeah. And we have had uh, quite some issues with the accuracy of the code itself, that it doesn't calculate the laser position correctly. Oops. Do you have any problems like that in laser SAR, or is it just uh, that just works fine all the time? Uh, it, it works fine because um, it works with absolute positions. Uh, when you switch on the machine, you have to run the homing cycle, uh, which means it goes in X and Y yes, okay. axis. At the on the top left corner, there is zero zero. Um, so it goes to the first end switch and goes to the, to the next end switch, um, and then it knows here is zero, and then you can do whatever you like and it knows where the head is. Is it that, was it your question? Uh, my question was that uh, with Laos you could get, uh, for example, you do an entire run and you go back to the zero position, but it's not exactly at the zero position. It makes Ouch. a small error but during the cycle. Ouch. No, this, and this doesn't happen with the, with the laser SAR electronics. It is, sometimes it really happens that um, you can do a lot of uh, things with parameters right or wrong. So let's say you go through three millimeters, uh, would you choose 1,000 millimeter speed? And let's say not to, to treat the tube bad, you go with 50%. And then do your, your run. And afterwards, you see if it goes through or not. Um, and you have the feeling, no, it didn't work then you can do again the same, the same run, the same job again and again, mm. as long as you don't touch anything inside, like you move the wood, piece of wood, nothing happens. It goes exactly the same contours, exactly the same traces. Um, but I wouldn't recommend this hardware very much. Um, yeah, we've used the Laos hardware, and the, the hardware itself is basically from what I hear from you, uh, in quality, roughly the same as the uh, laser SAR. Okay. Also, no safety inher inherent safety in it at all. What we're going to do is, as I mentioned before, um, we want to do our own laser board. Um, with my experience in laser safety, there will be an FPGA for all the safety circuitry and uh, some more benefits. What we actually want to do with the laser is doing big data. We want to monitor the, the temperatures of the mirror, of the tube, of water in, water out, water flow, how many times or how long the, the laser tube is running, and this and that and that and that. And we want to integrate it into our lab net and, and store the data on a server so we can see slow changes, for example, in the temperature of a mirror, so we can see, well, it's time to clean, or so we, we get some more experience, more data for having experience. Um, yeah, the Laos, I heard the name Laos board, maybe I have seen it, but I can't remember, but it's, if you say it's the same, no, I don't say it. Um, if it's the same type of board, ugh. There are some other uh, smoothie board I heard has should be okay. It supports also lasers, but it, they all don't have these laser safety secretary. 
Was it? Yeah. Did I answer your question? You answered it fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And we have another question over there. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Levin Standard, Fab Lab Brussels. Thank you for the interesting talk. Another Fab Lab, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, we don't have a laser saw yet. I yeah. worked with one in Antwerp. They, um, you just answered my first question uh, about the controller. Yeah. Um, um, my second question would be if I want to build it on a smaller budget as a student project, where would you <laughs> compromise? Um, at the tube. Do a 60 uh, watt instead of 100 yes, watt. Yes, yes. Um, 100 watt is, is fun. Sure. Um, I mean, nothing replaces power so good like more power. Everyone knows it. Same like memory. Um, but you can do a lot with a 60 or 50, sometimes 40 watt tube. Um, this is about 1,000, 1,200 euros. Um, you can have it cheaper. Uh, what I just learned is that you can have, let's say, 100 watt in this size, or you can have 100 watt in smaller size, or larger, I don't know, but in a different size. And it's cheaper, but uh, the beam quality is less, it's not so nice. I mean, you have seen the images on, on the papers, uh, the, the small shots. It was just a small shot with very low energy on the paper to get this, uh, to get a bit, um, to see where the laser beam goes. Um, it looks like a donut, so the energy distribution in the beam is like this. And, um, the beam doesn't go out collimated. Oh, it's my glasses. Um, so the, the beam widens up. And the way, how, much, how far it widens up, this is one quality um, parameter. And the cheaper the tube, the more you have this. Um, I would go with a high quality, but less energy tube. Um, you want to have a high quality, or you want to have the beam as good as possible. Um, you can have a lot of energy, but if the beam is, is crap, um, then you have problem adjusting the system and um, makes no fun. And uh, you can compensate less energy with slower motion of the head. You don't need to run 8,000 millimeters per minute, what you can, can do with this tube. But then you go on 2,000 millimeters, or uh, you go with 100, or whatever. I would, I would save the money on the tube, get a good quality, but you don't need that much energy. Um, and I think it doesn't, there is no linearity in how big the machine is. I mean, if you have an aluminum uh, profile, if you have it one meter or 80 centimeters, there's no big difference. So go big, build the machine in the full size, but um, with less energy. It doesn't hurt. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, then we have another question over here. Yeah, please. Hello, my name is Arvid and uh, I wanted to thank you for your nice talk, it's very thank interesting. Um, we in our hackerspace are planning uh, to build uh, Laser Sora 2. And so I wanted to ask, we are not really <coughs> sure how much it will cost us, so I wanted to ask you um, how much uh, are the costs only for the materials if you doesn't broke anything. And the second question is um, how many people were you to build that up and how many uh, men hours, uh, or women hours, sorry, uh, you put into it. Got it. Um, uh, the, the pricing. Um, as far as I know, we've been between five and a half and six grand, five and a half and six thousand euros, and this was thousand one hundred. So just take this out of the calculation. You will be good with um, four, four and a half Ks. 
but you can do if you think twice about the design there are some there is some room to save some money to make things more intelligent more smarter you you will find better solutions it is quite cool if you have some mechanical engineering guys or girls it is not the end of what's possible in the design and yeah find another board um Sorry, I forgot the two last other questions. Uh, the second question was uh, how many hours you put in into the project um, until everything was running. We had two building weekends, meaning we met on Friday afternoon. We had the mechanical group and we had the electrical group. The mechanical group had about two weeks weekends building, uh, which means beginning Friday afternoon, working till late night. Three, two, three, four o'clock. Next day, Saturday, meeting in the morning about 10. Working late, having supplies of Marty, of pizza, what's necessary, and uh, working late. And on Sunday, not so much, but working till 10 o'clock in the evening. So we had about two weekends this okay. style, and one, as far as I remember, one. Uh, weekend for the electrical system. So we've been, I don't know how many guys have made the, the mechanical setup. I think it was the four to five guys. Um, I don't know if they've been there all the time together or if they did shifts um, from the electrical side. We've been three to four guys and we tried to To, to distribute the work. Uh, one was working on this area and the other one in this area and we tried to get the cables around. It is you stand in cables, you have wires round and round and round and, and open ends and you, yeah. Um, I would say if you're focused, if you have everything ready, three, four good weekends, or let's say one week of vacations from morning to evening. You can do it. Okay, thank Yeah, please. Okay, then we have one more question over there. Yeah. Hey, you got uh, plenty of modifications to the Lazar Zauer design, so in which website can you find them? Out. In none. <laughs> um, I don't know where we got the laser holders, the laser tube holders in plastic parts. Um, I don't know where we bought all the parts. Uh, we bought the electronics at the Nortat Labs. Nort Labs. Um, it is the web shop around the Lysis House where we got some special water cut aluminum parts. Um, they have these, you get a sheet of metal, eight millimeters thick of aluminum with uh, some special parts and there you get also the, the uh, the mirror holders and you get also the tube and, and also the electronics. One thing I forgot about the, the mirror holders, uh, one thing we want to modify we haven't done yet is, it is nice, you can pan and tilt the mirrors, but you can't move them up and backward and forward. You can't move them in the three axes. This is something very, very important for, for calibrating the laser, because otherwise if you want to change something, you have to open an M M4, M5 screw because it's this aluminum profile and you open the screw, you shift it two millimeters in one way and you close the screw. You can all imagine what happens. You have to start from the beginning. Um, yeah, we haven't found these uh, mirror holders yet, but um, we got a lot of from, from this Nord, Nord uh, Labs web shop. Um, the electronics we're going to build, we will publish open source, of course, um, but I don't think we will sell them. Maybe we sell the PCBs, I don't know. It's, it's not, not um, decided yet. And eBay is a fantastic source. This, this emergency stop relay is from eBay. Uh, the, the three switches for or well, the four switches are from eBay, um, the, the emergency stop switch was from eBay. You have to look. Okay, and on which website you plan to publish source? 
Um, first of all is fablab minus karlsruhe.de. This is where I live. Um, this is my space, and then it will, I guess it will be published on GitHub, something. Thank you. You're welcome. I think that concludes the questions. There's no more. Okay. <laughs> it's really over then. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you all guys. Built more lasers.